The Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, 
not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems. Christ to his only sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels are testing, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen our new life obtaining have mercy victor king ever reigning amen alleluia According to John, glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and told Simon Peter and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord.
once again, good morning and happy Easter. Oh, wonderful to be with you. You know, when I first got to Mary Magdalene, I, I've always liked St. Mary Magdalene um, as uh, just, a, just a wonderful patroness for us, but um, I now realize why she is our patron. And so that every Easter, everybody has to talk about us. <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful choice. Um, no, and, and there's something, even though that's meant to be kind of in jest and facetious, there's something, there's something a little bit true about that statement. Every Easter, everyone around the world is talking about us. Not because we're the parish of St. Mary Magdalene, although um, that does bear a certain merit, but everybody talks about us in the sense that just like St. Mary Magdalene could not keep the resurrection to herself, so it should be with us. Right, as we hear that gospel, right, the experience that Mary Magdalene has at the tomb is the experience that every Christian is meant to have. Right, this moment of realizing that death doesn't win, that darkness doesn't win, that sin doesn't win. Because Mary Magdalene shows up to the tomb and it's empty. She shows up to where Jesus has died and is buried. And she knows that. She's one of the very few who stayed at the foot of the cross until the bitter end. She saw with her own eyes. She heard with her own ears the very last dying breath that Jesus took. She knows deep in her bones that he is dead. And when she goes to the tomb, she finds it empty. When she goes to the tomb, she has this understanding. She gets this realization. She has this moment of understanding that the person and power of Christ, that the love and mercy of God is powerful enough, is big enough to roll back the stone, to rise from the dead, to conquer all of darkness, to breathe life into death. That's what we celebrate, and that's something worth celebrating. Right? I don't know if you've seen our statue. Um, we've got a beautiful statue of St. Mary Magdalene in our gathering space. And it's one of my favorite statues I think I've ever seen of Mary Magdalene. And she's holding in her hands this bottle of perfume that she's bringing to the tomb. Right? The reason she's going to the tomb is to continue anointing the body of the Lord. That's such how great was her love for the Lord in life that even in death she wanted to continue honoring and serving him. And so she's got this bottle of perfume and it's still full. Right? That bottle is unopened because she got to the tomb and realized she didn't need it. And if you look at that statue again, she's, she's running and her, her other hand, where one hand is holding this perfume, her other hand is gesturing backwards, saying, look at the emptiness. Look at what we have now in this person of Christ. If you haven't seen it or spent any time with it, I invite you after Mass, after Mass, to look at <laughs> the statue in our gathering space. It's really, it's really beautiful. Um, right? Because... As you look at that statue, right, that's, again, that's, that's us. Yes, it's certainly us as the parish of St. Mary Magdalene, but that's everyone who would dare to take on the name of Christ. 
which I think is why we're here today, right? At our baptisms, we were, we were claimed by Christ. At our confirmations, that fullness of the Holy Spirit was outpoured upon us and now has that indwelling in our very hearts and souls. And every time we come to this Eucharistic table, we receive from it that, that the very body and blood that the Mary was coming to anoint. The very body and blood, but not just the body and blood, but the soul and divinity of Jesus Christ himself, who is alive. And that's the point, is that as we're baptized, as we're confirmed, and as we receive the Eucharist, as we're incorporated into the church, which we celebrated with our folks going through RCIA last, uh, last night, uh, every Easter vigil is when the, the church celebrates all the new Catholics coming into the church and receiving their sacraments for the first time. The whole point of all of these things is that they're not joining something dead but something that is dynamic, something that is alive, someone that is alive, someone that is dynamic. Right? The same Lord who rose from the tomb 2,000 years ago, the same Lord that Mary Magdalene was trying to anoint and couldn't because his body wasn't there, that same Lord is alive now, lives now. And in a way that we can actually understand, in a way that we can relate to, in a way that we can experience. Because if his, if his life is somehow so far away, if his life is so removed from me, that it no longer has any bearing on what I do or what I say or who I am, who cares? I mean, honestly, if the life of Christ has no bearing on my life, why should I care even if he rose from the dead? It means nothing, and it accomplishes nothing. But because he is so imminently close, because this is the God that we have, Right? A God who chooses not to remain distant even though he could. A God who chooses not to bring us into condemnation even though he could. We have a God who chooses to undergo the cross and undergo his death in order to bring us the same life that he now lives. He chooses to enter into every aspect of who we are in order to breathe new life. Because sin doesn't win. Death doesn't win. Darkness doesn't win. His mercy, his love, his light, and his life. This is what wins. This is what conquers all of these things that we are so powerless against. And so as we celebrate the life that the Lord now lives, and as we get to be drawn into and experience that life anew, right, let's ask for the Lord to continue pouring out that Easter grace upon us, that new life within us asking for him to, to show us his closeness, asking him to, to draw us closer into his life and into his light, asking, us to, uh, asking him to help us experience that love and that mercy, understanding that that's literally the whole point of everything, is that we can gesture like Mary Magdalene that the tomb is empty, that the body of the Lord is not dead and lifeless, trapped in the rocks of the grave, but that he lives. And he lives not just as some thing out there, but he lives as someone imminently close with his love and his light and his life that renews and refreshes me 
and makes me into something that I never could have been on my own. Someone who can outlive life itself. Understanding that as the tomb had no power over him, so the tomb has no power over us. And so together as we celebrate this Eucharist, right, let's ask for these gifts to enliven and be renewed and restored in our hearts and in our lives. That the life of Christ may be the life we too now live.